Baylor fans, welcome to the Hopkinton High School Athletic Center here on a Tuesday night for a classic Tri-Valley League matchup between the Hopkinton boys basketball team and the Westwood High School basketball team. My name is Josh Hanna, one of the assistant principals here at Hopkinton High School. I'm joined tonight by, uh, to the left of me, Justin Pominville, our other assistant principal, and the Big Cheese principal, Evan Bishop. We're Thank excited you, Josh. for a great night here, guys. Absolutely. We're excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Uh, that's going to be a tough test for the Hillers. Uh, Westwood comes in 6-2. Uh, and two. They're a very strong team this year, led by guard Tim Giovino, uh, regarded as one of the better guards in the league. So the H Hillers will have their hands full tonight. As we're uh, getting ready for an exciting tip-off, we're going to be turning the uh, mic down to the court for uh, starting lineups. First, the Westwood Wolverines. Number three, senior captain Tim Giovino. Number 12, senior Chuck Bemis. Number 14, senior captain Aiden Fitzgibbon. Number 32, junior Thomas Herbert. And number 33, junior Nick Anderson. Westwood is coached by Steve St. Martin and Ryan Douglas. And now for your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. At guard, number 22, sophomore, Ben McKenzie. At forward, number 30, senior captain, Jimmy Adams. At center, number 31, senior captain, Austin Odell. At forward, number 35, junior, Zach Sisiski. And at four, number 45, junior Kyle Rector. The Hillers are managed by Bridger Lee and Cam Hutchins. They're coached by Tom Keane, Chris Banks, and Jay Golden. Would you please all rise for the playing of our national anthem? Guys, well, I tell you, we got a great matchup tonight. Uh, Coach St. Martin versus Coach Keene, two longtime successful Tri Valley League basketball coaches bringing their teams out tonight about <coughs> midway through the season. Uh, what, what are you guys expecting to see tonight? Well, I'd like to definitely see a really strong inside presence. It looks like we've got a height advantage, so it would be nice to see uh, crashing the boards and being able to get some easy putbacks early. Yeah, and I would agree. Uh, clearly, we had the height advantage like we probably do in most games, so it would be nice to take advantage of that. Uh, early scouting reports we got from uh, Coach Sanborn before the game is that uh, Westwood's a great shooting team, so curious to see the type of defense the Hillers come out in to try to, to, try to stop that. So here we go. We're about to tip it off, and uh, Kyle Rector standing in at 6'11", is going to jump here. Let's see if the Hillers can take possession early. And there it is, Austin O'Dell on the top. Swings over to Jimmy Adams. Looks Back like Westwood in a 2-3 uh, zone here to start off the game. See if we can shoot ourselves out of it. There it is to the high post. Inside. Kicks it back out. Over to the wing. Example of some great hustling. Good Good hustle by Odell. There you go on a jump ball here. Goes to the Wolverines. Not a bad first possession though, getting it inside I think to some of the big guys, uh, running the 1-3-1 offense against that 2-3 zone is a way to attack it, so uh, not a bad start. Would like to see the bucket go down, but good rebounding and good hustle. 
Westwood brings it up and it's looks like a little uh a little boxing triangle or, or it's not a box in one. Uh, box in it oh, is. It looks like a, a triangle diamond. and one. Diamond and one. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like I said before, Giovanni or uh, Giovino, excuse me, is going to have uh, Jimmy Adams on him to start. The rest of the defense will be in the diamond. So Hopkins brings over McKenzie over to the right side, circles it back to Jimmy on the wing. And one of the keys, obviously, uh, Evan, is in a 2 3 zone. You've got to be able to shoot some jump shots out there in the wing, force them to come out. And and guard against it. Absolutely, and that'll yeah, that'll give the uh, you know release some of the pressure on the big guys underneath and start hitting some shots. So, mm. West with another tough rebound as they bring it up the floor into the middle. So we got two zone style defenses, guys, to start the game. But you know, one of the things we love about coming out to watch these games is our student athletes. Rebound there, nice job by Zach Zizitsky. After a long day of school. Up. Uh, coming out back, joining themselves and, and, and exercising, working nice. as a team. Nice Christine. job inside, director. Nice pass by Jimmy Adams. Executing. Absolutely. Nice job. Uh, Jimmy, you could see his face guarding. They're one of their better players. He, he did this a couple times last year and had tremendous success as Leslie brings it across the three-point line. It's Gibbons off. Nice rebound again by Zizitsky. Stolen by Giovino. Up the floor. Reverse his direction. Jimmy's forcing him a little bit to his right. I think Jimmy with the long uh, wingspan is going to give uh, Giovino a little bit of trouble. Um, he brings him through two defensive screens. Defensive end. Good drive, good defense, good help defense by the Hillers. And that's travel. Nice job, nice defense by the Hillers. Yeah, the Hillers at two and seven, but they've lost a lot of close games. Uh, they're still in it in terms of a uh, chance to make the state tournament. So you never want to count this group down. Paul there, number 14, Aiden Fitzgibbon on the inbound. Yeah, so Mr. Hanner is a, a successful basketball coach that uh, you were uh, before uh, becoming an assistant principal here in Hopkinton. When you were coming into a game, knowing you were playing one of the better teams in the league, what would be some of the pregame messages that you want to give to your team? Well, in my opinion, what it was always about is playing hard on the defensive side of the game because your shot can come and go, uh, you, you know, your, your hot hand could get cool really quickly, but if you are aggressive on the defensive side and willing to box out, uh, play team defense, you're going to find yourself uh, with a chance to win. That's good. That's you know, good advice. No question about it. Absolutely. Defense and rebounding is the name of the game. And it's a great equalizer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And down here up to Rector. Over to Zach for this. Oh. A little pump fake. Nice pump fake into Odell. Good strong hands. Looked like a foul down there, so. but uh, we don't want to get on the reps too early. Yep. One. yep. Nick Anderson with the rebound. Bringing it down. Still in that. Matt, it's kind of like a matchup zone. It looks like, like it, like yeah. Like an Amoeba D, if you remember yep. back in the early 90s. Wow. Oh, nice. nice. McKenzie with the steal, two on one here. Over nice to pass, Zizitsky. lays it down. Oh, oh just a miss. Another Good rebound for the Hillers. Yep, there we go. Swings Good it. Good swing. That's it right there. Strong hands by Rector, and he gets a foul. That's it. There we go. Second foul on Westwood early. So it's clear the Hillers are playing with a tempo that's going to be able to match the Wolverines' success. Looks like Reed Wilson into the game for the, uh, for the Wolverines. Subbing in for, Tom, for Thomas Hebert. Inside director. Oh, travel. Oh, gone with the travel there. Yep. A couple of steps, but what they are doing well is successfully finding the ball in the low post. Absolutely. Which we said at the beginning was one of the key things they had to do. Guys at 6'11", take advantage of that height. Playing strong defense so far, moving their feet, communicating. That's a nice drive to the basket right there uh, by number 12, uh, Chuck Bemis, to tie the game at two here. Now, fans, you may know that uh, our principal, Evan Bishop, was a star basketball player. Nice job. Player I don't know about that. Nice job. The, nice uh, pass inside, director. Burlington Red Devils now going on over 15 years ago, but more recently Maybe he's longer. played yep. uh, in their rec league. And I'm wondering, Evan, are you seeing some uh, game out there on the floor that's reminiscent of when you and your old friends get together and try to play full court hoops? <laughs> yeah, there's not as much hanging as there is in <laughs> full court hoops. Uh, oh, that's a nice defensive play by Giovino. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, we also play a lot of zone in our uh, rec league as well. Uh, so <laughs> some similarities already. <laughs> nice movement right there by Jimmy Adams' his feet. Staying in front of number three, Giovino. That's a nice matchup as a fan at home. If you're looking to put the ISO cam somewhere, yep. Take a look at those two. Good rebound. Take a good rebound by Rector. Moves the ball up the floor. 
Sisti in the left corner. Over to McKenzie. There we go. Oh, great yeah. idea. You gotta find that touch. But I tell you what, I like how they're being aggressive, shooting the basketball here. They take him to the hoop. Hopefully it'll fall soon. Another shot that good box the out by Szczytski. Nice job. You know, I'll be honest, guys, it doesn't look like Westwood has gotten off the bus yet. I, I would agree with you. Their offense doesn't look like they uh, know really how to attack the, the diamond in one so far. And we've all coached before. We know how those long bus rides uh, can really take a lot out of the away team. You know, they're sitting there. It's cold. And oh, yeah, it's nice a good three by McKenzie. Justin, in your coaching over in Uxbridge over the years, what were some of the longer bus rides that you had to take part in? Well, in Uxbridge, everywhere is far. So <laughs> we would, Tantasqua, Sturbridge, after an hour on the bus, it's tough to get warmed up. Now, is Tantasqua actually in Massachusetts? or It's debatable. It's debatable. <laughs> Central Mass? Yes, or Western Mass. Western Mass. Yep. Good Hillers, defense right there by Hillers the Hillers. was a great stop. It's nice to see Ben McKenzie shoot that three. That's yeah. been something that's been missing a little bit, so it's nice to see them start spreading it out like that. Looks like Brendan Kelly has entered the game as well, number 15 for the Hillers, as well as Justin Blanchard, number 44. And they're in a bit of a trapping zone here, looking for someone to come up the corner, and they fall back into their 2-3. A little trivia for the panel here. Which college basketball team is well known for their successful 2-3 zone? That would be years? Mr. Hanner's favorite college basketball team, the Syracuse Orange. Head coach Jim Beheim has really turned that into an art form, and they've had nice tremendous defense, success. Yeah. Absolutely. That was a great putback by Justin Blanchard, just getting off the bench there, getting right in the game. One of the things I do like about the zone defense in uh, inbounds plays is it doesn't nice really allow for again. great uh, picks to occur and you can't get backdoored quite as easily. It's not as easy to rebound out of because you don't have a man to go necessarily. you got to match up once the ball's shot, but you can't find those guys leaking open as Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. And it takes away, like we've talked about, number three, uh, Giovino. He's good off the ball, good dribbler. He can drive to the basket. It takes that away a little bit when you run that zone, especially when you put someone in his face like Jimmy Adams so far. A little miscommunication there. Yeah, I was cutting right. They thought they were cutting left. A couple of uh, basketball legends at the scorer's table tonight, Coach Absolutely. Mark Sanborn and Coach Dick Bliss. Uh, both, of course, Mark playing and now coaching with us here at the high school. And Coach Bliss, the uh, Walter Brown Gymnasium's court is named after him, Coach Bliss Court. He's had tremendous success as a girls and uh, boys basketball coach over the years. So Great it's educator. good to see some alums still a part of the program. Absolutely. Time out here by Westwood. Maybe looking to regroup a little bit on the offensive end. You know, I got to tell you guys, this is fun getting out here on a Tuesday night, spend some uh, couple good hours with you two and uh, laughing it up, talking some hoops. Absolutely. Especially with the Hillers jumping out to a 9-2 to two lead. Maybe we're just bringing the magic That's they it. needed. Get Maybe back this will the be the booth track. from now on. Let's keep it going. For any of you fans that are at home, probably a good call as the uh, ice and rain are starting to come down a little bit. We're hoping that we'll see uh, uh, no problems with getting to school tomorrow morning. That's for sure. A lot of teaching and learning to go on. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope so. We don't want to uh, we don't have any delays. inside information about that. Yes. <laughs> so. You know, there's actually over 100 viewers that uh, go live with this just online streaming across that right? the country. Wow, yeah, no we were talking to someone recently about that, and I couldn't believe it. They have uh, uh, technology to tell them where they're streaming from, it's all the way out as far away as from California. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Oh, that was a travel. That's a travel. Good call. There we go. Good defense by McKenzie there. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what Coach St. Martin does over in Westwood to adjust to this. Uh, diamond and one is it's kind of a funky defense to play offense against. Uh, it's not terribly easy to beat, but you have to have a discipline, and it can take away if you're used to man-to-man -man offense. Absolutely. Swinging it around. Good ball movement by the Hillers. Someone's got to flash that yep. high post Those big here. Man. Yep. Blanchard on the low post. Yep. Oh. Gets it into the record. Great yeah. pass. Once again, they're executing yep. well. Get a finish. Those shots will fall. Yep. Ball back with the defense. Good ball movement. Good help defense right there by Kelly. Jump and a ball. jump ball, nice job. It's the Hillers. Great defense by Brendan Kelly there. You see the uh, Celtics player Isaiah Thomas scored, I think it was 25 points 
after the 30 times in a row in the last player for the Celtics to do that was Kevin McHale. Yeah, he's been excellent in the last few games. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, One of the top boat getters for the NBA All-Star game too, which is exciting. That's that's awesome. Yep. They've really come on lately. I think it's been seven of eight. They only lost there at Toronto when they were up uh, about 15 in the second half and blew that. So, whereas the Bruins are kind of going the other direction. So, good defense yeah. there by Westwood. Yeah, the Bruins took a day off to kind of regroup. After they did, a like everybody else, like everybody else did. Yeah, <laughs> they were with us. Yeah. Although I saw the Islanders fired their head coach today, which I thought was an interesting move. Yeah. Speaking of a guy who was great here, we see the hair on the head coach. Of the oh Islanders? yeah, it's unbelievable. Smooth. Yeah, very Absolutely. smooth. Absolutely. Well, well, nine to like two. We got 46 seconds left in the first quarter here. It's like Tim Burdick just entered the game. Good cut right there. Kicks it out. Number four. Good mm. fight. Good fight there underneath good the glass. Good fight by Blanchard. 39 seconds. 30 on the shot clock. Yep. Tries to dump it in. It's tough with those That's trees down That's there. That's absolutely. Get the wings. Get the arms out. It's actually good in. Inside pass right there by Fitzgibbon. Good shot right there by Reed Wilson. Excellent shot by Reed. Yep. Reed a junior. Right off the dribble. Six man for the Wolverines. Verdict over to Kelly. Good. Good patience right now right here by the offense. Dump down. That's it. Swing it over to Jimmy Adams. Ooh, Ooh. Almost. The glass. I heard him call it off I, did, the glass I thought I did too, too actually, so. from here. Yeah, all the way yep. up here we heard it. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Reed Wilson, nice job. Good defense by Blanchard. Staying in front with his hands up. I'll tell you, a good defense. Hey, strong quarter by the Hillers defensively, absolutely. No question about it. Coach Keene's got to be psyched. 9 to 4. Uh, you know, I think it was more of a defensive battle than an offensive struggle. Both teams were yep. executing well. And we'll see as the game wears on whether they can continue to kind of find their groove. You could hit two or three more of those little inside jump shots, little layups. Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at a 15-point first quarter. Speaking of hoping to have a 15-point advantage in the first quarter, what do you guys think about uh, this Sunday night's game with the Steelers and the Patriots? Oof. I think it's going to be a really close game. <clears throat> the one good thing, I think, is that you know the Steelers are feeling really good off that win, whereas the Patriots have a lot to work on, so I think they're going to come out really motivated. I saw an interesting stat that Tom Brady is like seven and one or six and one versus Mike Tomlin's defenses in his career with like no interceptions and twenty touchdown passes, something outrageously successful. And so I hadn't been that impressed with Pittsburgh's defense all year. I know they got some pretty marquee offensive players that are exciting, but uh, yeah, I think if Brady and the Pats are able to put up thirty points, which they've been kind of doing pretty recently, I think that they're going to be okay. Yeah. But it's going to be a great game. Yeah, I know, agree. Pittsburgh's got a yep. tremendous. A track record of success and all, all both games this upcoming weekend will be fun should be to great watch. absolutely yep Aaron Rodgers just looks outstanding right now so yep. all right back to basketball sorry I digress and uh, Westwood brings it up on top again against that diamond good hands by the Hillers there Burdick bringing it up the court driving it to the corner just head up across the top Lynch it and swings it over. Still trying to find a, that high post. Six seconds on the shot clock. Oh, nice feeds try it in. inside, but good defense there by yeah. Giovino. Difficult time finding the where the post was there. A little short there by uh, Reed Wilson. Burdick with the rebound. Good hustle. Burdick's got some athleticism. He's fast. Trying so to set it up. That's certainly they pushes it every time. Yep. yep. See if they can penetrate this defense. Odell flashes off the Blanchard screen down low, kicks it back out. It's actually a good box out right there by by Wilson. Giovino with the shot, still off. You can see Giovino forcing it there a little. Absolutely. He's, getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated by the defense, which is a good thing from the Hillers' perspective. And Westwood's trying the best to beat you know, this four with four over on this side. Wilson again with the three is off. Nice play right there by yeah. Reed Wilson. Excellent. Good defense Down right the there by Kelly. Good hands. Kelly's got great hands. Only a sophomore. Hopkins oh, finding it in the high uh, post. That's where look. things start to happen. Good look right there from Odell. Just gonna kiss that glass a little bit. And here comes, ooh, almost steps, but a good triple threat pump fake. We got 
Got Blanchard on the reach there. Reach. Try to challenge him up by the three-point line. Got a new crew coming in. Looks like Szyzycki and uh, Rector back in the game. and Rector. Yep. Up to the top, the key. Swings it to the left, and they're setting up what seems to be Coach St. Martin setting up a play, it looks like. Now, right. if, if you notice, without Giovino in the game, the, the, the Hillers have gone to a straight 2-3 defense here. Trying to use their size underneath. Good rebound right there by Rector. So good adjustment by the Hillers. Absolutely. Great adjustment. It's, it's, it's intelligent coaching. It's intelligent playing to be able to transition. That's one of, you know, as you get more comfortable as a team and you can adjust and keep the offense of the other team off balance, it gives you that much more of an advantage. No question. And Tommy Leone enters the game for the Hillers. To the right. I have noticed Westwood's getting a little bit more aggressive extending out on the defense. So yeah. sometimes that'll... Yeah, it's a nice there move it is. And I think that's what they have to... Yeah, we talked about it earlier, Josh. Until we start hitting some shots from the outside, that's what they're going to do. And so... But a good entryway pass down to Odell for a bucket there. Swings it over to the middle. That's a hot spot to beat the 2-3 zone right yep. there. But the hey, we get the rebound. Here. Yep. Coming up from behind, Ben's got to watch it. Does a good job protecting the ball. Brings it up the middle. Ooh, almost a double dribble. Hesitates. Reverses it, and they're setting up. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Ooh, they're gonna call uh, three seconds three on record. That's a yeah. that's a tough one. It looked like he had just climbed out, but he may have been setting up shop there. And coach from Westwood might have been in that ref's ear, reminding him, "Hey, let's take a look." And. Uh, Hey, when you're 6'11", I don't blame you for wanting to camp out down there. You're, you're one pass from a dunk, right? I mean. Got Jimmy Adams checking back in. Westwood brings it over onto the right side, swings it down, back up to the top. McKenzie with nice footwork. That's it. Good defense Gets back by the to the spot. So quick guard play being shown by Westwood right now. Yep. Uh, another great rebound by the Hillers. And a good block by Rector. Nothing easy inside nope. so far. Nope. Justin, you said it at the beginning of the game. It's all about rebounding, cleaning the glass. They're doing an excellent job. Ball stays with the Hillers. Good defense there by the Wolverines, but it'll stay with, with the Hillers. You're right. And speaking of the uh, the trip from Westwood, this is one of the longer drives. Okay, so yeah, from the other yeah. side of 109, yep. you're out kind of near that uh, Dedham area almost. I see we got Athletic Director D. King in the house tonight. She's making sure everything's running smooth. Oh. Nice entryway pass into Odell in a bucket. Excellent. I think they found something there. Has to get those to fall. They've been feeding them all night. Yeah, on the right box. 4-14 left in the half, and the Hillers are up 13-4. to Westwood brings the ball over on the right side. Again, they're working it well, kind of penetrating the defense. They've come out unlucky with uh, some of their jump shots so far. Little floater. Yeah, they're off a little bit here. I'm regarded as one of the better shooting teams uh, in, in the Tri-Valley League. They must be getting frustrated right now with the Hiller defense. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've really gotten comfortable adjusting with what they want to do against it, you know? And uh, that might have to be a halftime adjustment. Get on the whiteboard in there yep. and uh, really kind of show the guys where they need to be. Absolutely. So it's to take advantage. Oh, nice little we'll take move. Take a basket. And a foul there on Szyzycki. Looked like pretty good defense to me. <laughs> uh, Non-shooting foul. So the Hillers have three fouls. Westwood has two. Uh, well played first half. Not you know not, nothing too crazy here. Three thirty left. Moves the ball out. And he comes number four across the top. Little miscommunication. Resets. Yeah. Westwood, yeah, Westwood trying to space the floor here. Yep. Three across. Unsuccessfully. Yep. Nice move in the paint right there. Kick back out. It's tough. You, you, you can drive to the basket, but when you look at two to three pillars over six foot five, six foot six, yeah. it's tough to take it to the basket. But a good, good finish right there by number 32, Thomas Hebert. And Hopkins in over the midline. Ben setting up the offense over to Jimmy. Swings it around. They've been very patient trying to find the upper or lower post. Skip pass. To the middle. Ooh, it's nice steal right by there. number four. Is that going to be too much? Up to GV, no, too much. Stepped good idea, but too much. Yeah, and even thinking back, if you think for the last few years, Westwood has had one of the better teams in the Tri-Valley, but have struggled here 
uh, in Hopkinton. I believe it was last year when they went to overtime with the Hillers. Uh, and so Hopkinton historically plays Westwood pretty tough, at least for the last few years. Well, it's it great rivalries to be that way this way. in yeah. a lot of the sports between Hopkinton and Westwood. I know in football and in wrestling, uh, uh, lacrosse and baseball, great matchups historically over the years. Mackenzie. That's oh. a big three by Mackenzie. That's his second of the half. It's great to have your point guard have a hand like that. Absolutely. Changes the game a little bit. And the Hillers have a 10-point lead with two minutes and 16 seconds left in the first half. Westwood's trying to answer. Oh. Shot off the and a rebound by Ebert. He's starting to, to play a little bit underneath. Junior from the Wolverines with a good rebound. As they're calling a shooting foul, they'll have two shots. Try to bring, bring them to within eight points. Five dribbles there before the shot. Let's see if he does it the sure. same the next time. We used to coach our players up to have a routine yeah. with their foul shots, so no matter the situation, they always did the exact same thing. Rhythm is so important in free throw shooting. Mr. Pomerville, did you, ever, did you have a routine dribbles. at the foul line? Pretty elaborate one. Yeah. <laughs> Care to tell the, uh, the listeners? <coughs> five dribbles. Five dribbles. <laughs> Very similar to Hebert. Classic five yeah. dribble, yeah. Three, three shot routine, yeah. Well established. And the Hillers bring it over the halfway point uh, with an eight-point lead, two minutes left. And uh, this, this is this kind of window, guys, where teams that haven't been winning, they could tend to let teams back in. Uh, so the Hillers really need to protect against letting Westwood get this down to within That's five. That's a good point, absolutely. You know, if they can extend it to eight, keep it at eight, maybe get it to ten, that would be great. If this gets too close, you know, that's... Um, that's not what you're looking to do within these last two minutes. Nope. You got to dig in a little bit on defense here. Big chance to Put get a stop. Feet. Put your hands out. Jimmy zoned in on really shutting down number three. Oh. Great job by Rector getting over there. Really altered that shot. Oh, geez, I didn't realize he uh, blocked that. Yeah. Well, the shot clock's at 15 seconds, so Westwood still has some time. Let's see what three does with the, after he inbounds the ball. Yep. It's probably going to come around off the two screens. screens. Yep. Nice take to the hoop. Again, off. Excellent. I want Gaffney off with this shot. Hillers look to push here. Whoa. Rector not used to carrying no, the yeah, ball on yeah. the top <laughs> of the key there. <laughs> it swings it back. The ball moving. Zitsky, yep. Cycle through. McKenzie flashes to the bottom. Oh, oh! It's the top. It's uh, tough break for the Hillers. Tough there. break. Very nice looking shot. He's got a hot hand. He's out defensively. Got Tim Burdick checking back Burdick in, number in. 24. Yep. He'll be at the top here, of here the comes West zone with here. A minute left. Swings through the screen. They're matching up well here. Playing good ball defense away from the I ball. Tell you, yeah. I mean, it looks like they want to run that pick and run off the top of the zone with, with number four and, and 32 Hebert. It's just the height advantage we have underneath that the roll is not there and it's causing them to have to push the ball or at least reverse the ball. And I don't think they're comfortable with that. And without three having the opportunity, Giovino, to get the ball in his hands more often, it doesn't seem like they're certainly in rhythm. There's only eight points here with less than a minute to go in the first half. Kudos to the Hillers defense. To be honest, as I'm watching this game, I'm surprised that Westwood isn't oh, more into a more full court press. We're trying to trap early on and get us into a track meet because I think that based on the athleticism they seem to have, they could beat us there. But we've done a great job in slowing it down and taking it to uh, our strengths. It's 38 seconds left here. Westwood with the ball at the top of the key. Sophomore Brian, Brendan Kelly's fit, coming back in. Yep. And once again, down the other side, there was another three second call on the Hillers. So, Mr. Hanner, you're probably right. The Westwood coach probably did say something yeah. to the official, which we'll have to talk to the Westwood administration about <laughs> next time we see them. Well, you know, that's good coaching. you got to subtly remind the officials from time to time where, you know, they might be missing something. These guys are human, so. Uh, but it doesn't seem. Coach St. Martin, though, he's out, he's out over the uh, over the line. He's pretty fired up. Good hands right we'll there see. by Kelly again on defense. Burdick driving to the lane. Intelligently pulls it one. back. Yep, realizes he was up, outnumbered there. Brings it to Kelly. Back a skip pass to Jimmy Adams. And back to Burdick. We got eight, seven seconds left. We'll work for a last shot here. Maybe draw a foul. Yep. Jimmy Adams open for three. Well, keeps it to eight points, guys. I'd say that's a pretty strong 
last two minutes for a team that's, you know, been struggling uh, the last few weeks at 2-7. and seven. I think that's 16-8 at, at, at half, although it's not a typical uh, varsity score. I think uh, for what, you know, where we've been playing, uh, it, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think a, a good way to kind of um, get back to your game and, and kind of get out of the struggles is to play defense and, and, and move your feet and talk and communicate. And it certainly seems like they're doing that right now on the defensive end from Hopkinton. So I think if you were to talk to, to Coach Keen ahead of the, uh, you know, ahead of time and say, well, you'll be up only scoring 16 points, I think you'd be pretty happy about that. So. Great hustle at both ends of the floor. Coach Keen's got to be very happy. All right, guys, so we're going to uh, take a break. we got half time, and we'll uh, see you for the second half. Thanks a lot, Hillers. Do you have what it takes? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Hi, welcome to Break Gardens. Just make sure that you water regularly and through November. So I think we can go ahead and start uh, back going here. I think fall is one of the best times to plant roses. Welcome back. It's about ready to uh, tip off second half action here at the Hopkins High School Athletic Center. Once again, I'm joined here with uh, Justin Palmville and Evan Bishop. Guys, what do you think? We're going to take the second half? Absolutely. I think if they continue the way they've been playing on both ends, they're going to have a really good shot here. I don't think we can anticipate a 16-8 to eight repeat in the second half, but I think we're gonna, Westwood's going to start hitting some shots, but I think uh, we are as well. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. we got to try to prevent against that. A good shooting team only scoring eight points in the first half. Uh, I'm sure they're not used to that output. So they're gonna probably start shooting and shoot early and often. So I think the Hillers need to uh, keep up with their defensive game plan, continue to move their feet, um, and hoping for a good second half. One thing that this gym provides is a different background that I think a lot of away teams kind of get uh, tricked up with because we have such wide track behind on both baselines. And that can create a little bit of a depth perception change. Uh, versus a lot of traditional gyms, the wall is, is really close to the uh, hoop. Absolutely. Here comes McKenzie out on the top. Westwood shows up once again in the 2-3 zone. Nice ball movement. Ah. Nice job crashing the boards by Adams. Good block though by Hebert. Looks like Westwood clearly Got a talking to at halftime, coming out a lot more <laughs> aggressive than they played in the first half defensively. But Hillers maintained control of the ball with a couple of uh, tips and bounced around. Still hopping in ball. So takes Good away. Defense there. Good Good defense there. Yeah, nice job, Jimmy. Jimmy Adams. Into Odell. Hey, I'm one. Oh, no, they're call it. Oh, he's got, is he calling that a charge? He's got to call it a charge on oh, Odell. I haven't seen. Oh, okay, there ah, he Ah, different, charge. a different yeah. charge sign. I was wondering what, what, what that was. It looked at first like he grabbed his wrist and then did the end one. I agree. Maybe he was confused. Yeah. Okay, Hiller's back on D. 
Same with the diamond and one. And let's see what Westwood did at halftime, guys, to try to beat this defense. Yeah, what kind of adjustments they're going to try to make. Moving it around. The defense there by Odell. Oh. Even with a good drive. And rebound, kicks it out. There we go, we push. Out to Jimmy, down in the lane. And he gets and fouled. Nice. Absolutely. Excellent good job by Jimmy. Job. Takes on a few different Wolverines and gets the foul. Jimmy Adams, son of Hopkinton Hall of Fame uh, standout athlete, Jimmy Adams, also uh, Jay, Jay Adams. And uh, Jimmy was our football captain, playing basketball, and he'll also play lacrosse. And a very good student as well. Excellent student. As is, honestly, I think this might be one of the higher GPA teams uh, in our school. Uh, we don't have those stats in front of us to confirm that, but you look around, there's a lot of AP students on that, on the floor and on the bench. Yep, absolutely, a lot of hardworking kids. Great shot there by Jimmy. Makes it 17 to eight, and Westwood brings it up over the half court. You can see four is trying to get into the game. He must be the, one of their second best scorers. I would think so, like. yeah. Yeah, still not falling for them, but at least he's trying to put it up. I. I, I you can see the Wolverines trying to shoot a little bit more, like I said earlier. Stays with Hiller Ball. Yep. On the defensive end, Jimmy Adams is blanketing Tim Jeevian. He's doing a great job. Absolutely. The Rector was out for a few weeks, so, you know, he's kind of wiping the cobwebs off a little. Obviously, at 6'11", he's a force. As his game begins more comfortable yeah. over the course of this back half of the season, that could spell good things oh. for the Hillers. Good hustle by Ben. Oh. It looks like Giovino is down. Time on the floor. His number three is down. I don't know if he got a, a finger in the eye there. Couldn't quite tell that. Or I, it could be an ankle as well. It looked like it was a, um, an uncomfortable collision with McKenzie there. Certainly hope he's okay. This is, uh, these are scary moments in high school sports. We, we don't want any of our young men or women getting injured. That's for sure. We Some good hands out there with one of our trainers, Maura White. Yeah, right on the scene. So he's taking a look at the knee. Yep. So many knee injuries with high school athletes these years compared to certainly from 50, 60 years ago and even 20 years ago. Weren't anywhere near the number of ACL tears. And, you know, people have speculated, is that because of uh, over-exercise, overuse? And we have so many kids playing AAU year-round and using the same muscles from ages 8 to 18. Not to say that that's what this is, but. And so frequent on those change of direction plays when they plant and they just all the momentum's going one way. And a lot of the kids bigger, faster, stronger, right? Uh, now, so it's puts a lot more strain on the on the ligaments and the muscles. Yep. We were talking about Tom Brady earlier a little bit, and one of the interesting kind of. Looks uh, like uh, Giovino's to his, to at least the one foot. He's having trouble putting his right leg down, which is not a great sign. It's a big loss for Westwood, yeah, senior captain. Yep. We, we give our uh, thoughts to the Westwood yeah. Athletic Department. We hope that he's the young man will be okay and be back on the floor uh, as soon as he can, for sure. Absolutely. But yeah, Tom talks a lot about designing his body in a, in a more like flexible way versus yep. uh, muscle and uh, what that'll allow for your tendons to be kind of soft and uh, malleable. Good hands right there by Adamson keeping the ball from going out of bounds. Zizitsky for the three, a little off. Lefty three. He's got a nice shot there. He does. See one of those fall. Oh. Wild shot there. That was a nice, uh, well, the four yeah, turns reverse in. take. Ziski hard to the basket and he gets the, uh, and the end one. There right. you go. Shooting foul, I mean. I definitely seem to have foul there. made an adjustment at halftime. So Ziski's had about three good looks so far. Moving the ball well. Good take there. Sometimes that's what, you know, as players get more and more comfortable and the coach says, you got to take it to the hole. And uh, that can open a lot of things up, really push the issue. Uh, did you count how many dribbles that. he had there, guys? <laughs> uh, Mr. Palmville, did, did you get that? I okay, missed it. Two. two. I, I believe it was a three dribble shot. Three so we're going to see. Shot. Let's see if he does three dribbles again this time. Sign of a good team is a good foul shooting team. Absolutely. Oh, looks like it was two. Oh, you were right, Mr. Hannah. Not going in. Third dribble. And he's got and it. Yep. It it's that two pause. Yep. Make really people talk about it. Set. I'm going to get that. Yes. Get that last one in. And here come the Wolverines again down. A quick shot baseline, on the baseline. Jump shot. That's a good shot there by 33, Nicholas Anderson. 
Difficult shot to make there, yep. but it's open against that defense. Looks like Westwood's now going to kind of pick up almost full court. Yeah, they got to try something here, put a little pressure yep. on the Hillers, change up the pace. Yep. But Hopkinton beats it, doesn't get lulled into a trap. Jimmy over on the right wing, reverses it. And again, we're going to get a, somebody to flash in the high post. A good look for Rector. That's a good look from Zizinski right there as Rector flashed off the pick from Odell. And so much of this is staying patient with this offense because it can, you know, it can be tiresome to continue to reverse the ball around, but you have that talent down there. Be patient and get him the ball. Absolutely. And as they go to the man, it'll be interesting to see if Odell can hit some from the elbow. Got Blanchard and, and Kelly shot. checking in. The coach is getting into his bench. He's not afraid to rotate around, keep fresh legs. Obviously, defense is working well. Nice. Get some both. Two. Four for four on our on the foul shots for the second half. That's a good way to start. Hiller's up 21 to 10 with 5.26 left in the third quarter as Westwood reverses the ball around the top of the zone. Brings it in. Nice kick out pass down on the baseline again. And a bucket uh, there by Hebert. And they've located a soft spot in the zone. Excuse and me, Chuck Bemis. Yep. Yeah, they have. They're yep. going to try to execute there. And I'm curious to see, uh, like, like in the first half, when Giovino went out of the game, Hillers went to a 2 3 defense. Look, they did the same thing once again down on this side of the court. So, looks like a travel. A little bit of a difference. Yep. A little bit of a difference with the, uh, the spacing when it comes to the diamond versus the, the, the 2 3. Yep. So. And now it actually looks like they're going with a 3 2 with Adams running the top. So a good adjustment right there after one bucket on the baseline. Uh, yeah, and sometimes they'll go, you know, uh, off a make or off a miss, and that'll uh, cue the team into what type of defense yep. are we playing. Excellent good hands here by Jimmy right there Adams. By Adams. Pumped it out. Oop. <laughs> Quick turnover. Got to tech that ball over the midline. Westwood on the move. Another baseline jumper. And good looking shot right there for Beamus. The second one in pretty much the same spot. 21-14. Hopkins with a seven-point lead. 4.23 left in the third quarter. Good break right there by the Hillers, getting it over half court. And they're overextending. We got a high to guard that could beat. There it is. Try by Kelly. Good look to McKenzie. Good block right there by Anderson. Out of bounds. Yeah, it's out of bounds. Westwood ball. That's good the, ball movement, though. Yep, good ball movement. That's the play. You pump fake. You make a move. You get around. And now help defense has to slide over. That's when guys will pop open. We got Odell checking in for Rector. Three, two zone. Long arms on this defense, that's for sure. Oh. He just, Odell just impacts the shot so much. Yeah. The height. Yeah. Some of the schools have those shooting machines that are like, they'll go up to 12 feet above the rim, so you got to get up over that to get it in to try to mimic players like uh, what the Hillers have defensively, because you're right, your typical jump shot is going to have to be adjusted. So who's caused the timeout there? Looks like coach's timeout for the Hillers. Try to, still with a seven point lead, 345 left. I do feel like the tide is shifting a little, but. A little bit, yeah. That was a good time for a timeout right there uh, from Coach Keen. So a good shooter yourself, uh, Mr. Hanna, back in the day. How did you have to adjust your shot uh, when, when, when the taller people were in your face? Uh, take us through that process a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, you know, I always tried to execute the pump fake to try to get them up and then come underneath them with a little bit of a Sherm Douglas type approach to the oh, rim wow. and yeah. up underneath. You know, uh, now to be honest, I was more of a track guy uh, back in the day. My, my uh, height was not welcomed by Coach Bliss in the basketball program, but we still love those guys and they were excellent players. A couple thousand point scores up there uh, on the banner for sure, but uh, we'll see what, <laughs> what the Hillers can do. On this camera right now, you see our athletic director and our new baseball coach, Steve Simos, chatting. Steve's season kicks off at the uh, third week in March, and welcoming him back to Absolutely. the head post. Gonna have a strong team. Wishing him the best of luck. Yep. Glad to have him back. Coaching our students, especially on the baseball field where he had such success uh, many years ago. Absolutely. Oh. Tried to trap there with Kelly and Adams. Westwood breaks it. Good entry pass to number 12. Great rebound Venus. by Ben McKenzie. Yep. So active down there. Absolutely. Good job right there by McKenzie with a good drive to the basket. And he finishes. Oh, nice take. Excellent job. Good that's, body placement. Yeah, that's the point guard play we've been eating. And he's executing right now. And they got an extended zone here where they're looking to trap on a pass. 
Force Westwood to change the pace. It's a good look right there into Bemis. Bemis has shown up in the second yeah, half. Yeah, Hopkins finding his groove. Hopkins in a little late with their transition defense there uh, in the rotation. And Westwood exploits it. That's a good take right there by Adams, drawing the foul on Fitzgibbon. You know, they were sitting, both, both teams were kind of sitting back in the first half, and neither team could really find a shooting groove. So that's kind of a natural progression as that defense isn't working for them. Let's try to bring it out a little, force the issue, and we're likely to see some things speed up a bit. Back out to Ben. Takes it with 2.56 left. Takes it on the right side to Adams. Swings it around. Austin at the top. Looking for an open man. There's McKenzie. Westwood's got a nice thing going right now. Their matchups seem pretty strong. We're limited areas are open. Oh, McKenzie looked like a the foul yeah. there. Oh. oh. Blanchard with it over the top. Tried to reach around. I guess the hands are part of the ball, but that uh, seemed pretty excessive on Ben. We'll have to see whether the official will give us one back on the next time down. Let's hope so. Here come the Hillers sitting in their defense. This time Blanchard's at the top here of the 3-2 the zone. Really key that he keeps his arms up like that. It extends his body much more than a three point three pointer shot. right there by Reed Wilson. I think that's his second three of the game. 23 19. Westwood, Jimmy Adams brings it over. Back over to Ben, setting up. Trying to find where can we get the ball down to our men in the post. And on top, swings it to the left. Good drop down. That's it right there. That's the play. Get it down low. Corrector on the low block. Yep. Odell comes from the top of the key, cuts Turn down the middle. It. That's it. It's a great it's looking a play. Absolutely excellent play. Six point lead with 155 left in the third quarter. It's a much needed bucket for the Hillers right yep. there. Good defense by Adams. Oh. Good turn, nice job. Good Odell, got oh. strong hands. Kenzie goes for it. Uh, good hustle good by Westwood. Right yeah. Fighting for the ball. That looks like a travel there. And that's just like you said, the height of Blanchard Faust can pull that down. It's funny when you, you know, the refs here at the high school level, I think call those travels a little tighter than they do in the NBA. You watch the guys in the NBA, I mean, those guards are regularly taking uh, third steps. And fourth and fifth at times. <laughs> See, they try to go down low again to wreck up. Blanchard with the three. Good crash. Good hustle. Good hustle right there. Hill is on the ground. Adams is there. Blanchard jump is there. Ball will go to to Westwood. Yep. But I love that hustle. We, it looks like there's two or three white jerseys there on the floor. I always want to be part of the Captain Floorborn uh, gang there. Not afraid to get dirty. It's going to be a tight one going down the stretch here. Absolutely. It's going to be a good one. Westwood moves the ball across. Looks to find the, the low post. The right wing, back up top. Sets for a three. Off good. Another good rebound. Good rebound backside by rebound by McKenzie. McKenzie. Crashing from the top. Finds a guy, boxes him out, puts himself in good position. Down in the low post. Yep. Swings it back over to Jimmy Adams on the right side. Back to the top to Ben. We got a high post, low post. Yep, Wrecker's going to come up back up, maybe rotate with Blanchard. Yep. There's the swing. Reverses it. And a three. You know what, Blanchard with that? That's it. Good shot by Blanchard. He took one last time down. Good for him. Not afraid to go back. Nope. Not afraid to go back to the well. Yep. Swings it over. There's Tough to defend when you can shoot at that size out by oh the top yeah. of the key. Once again, the hill is a little late on their rotation. And junior Nicholas Anderson Shooting gets inside. Foul. 21 seconds left here in the third quarter. Hillers have a nine point lead. And Westwood shooting two. Sorry, that's Chuck Bemis at the line. That's a smart foul now. Yep, only three, so now you can't make two points here. Off on the second as well, and a good rebound. rebound right there by Rector. Now I think he went one dribble on the first one and two dribbles on the second yep. one, so maybe he, comes to your point. he needs to work on his routine. Of course, I could be wrong. But, oh. Swings it over. Oh, it over. tough pass tough in the middle pass there, the middle. but it was nice. Hotel with strong hands with the catch. We're down under five seconds here. And a foul on Westwood. That's not a great foul right there by Westwood. Hopkins will take it. Gets them at five team fouls for the yeah. half. 2.9 seconds now as they inbound the ball underneath. 
This is a great chance to, to set some picks and get one of your big guys. Just pop it over the top, catch and shoot. With the height, I think that would be the play. McKenzie over here. Turn. Looks like Blint. Matt. Long touchdown pass. No. Oh. And uh, that wraps up the third quarter. Hillers up 28 to 19, guys. So they actually extended their lead one point. And I'd say overall, I thought Westwood played pretty well. They did, and uh, I feel like they, they, they handled that rush a little bit. I feel like there was a, a portion within that third quarter I thought that, that the momentum went to the Westwood side. But we weathered the storm a little bit and, uh, and put on a few late baskets in, in the quarter to extend a nine. So I think it was a good way to kind of, uh, you know, and obviously with the, the injury of Giovino, uh, I think Westwood is still trying to figure out who's going to be the guy that's going to try to maybe take some shots towards uh, the fourth quarter here. So it's going to be interesting how it plays out. Uh, I think we took a second to adjust from that diamond and one to the two three, but I think we're, we're we're back where we need to be and looking forward to a, a good fourth quarter. What do you think? Uh, what are you thinking about the game so far, Justin? Are you enjoying you know, your time in the booth here with the, uh, with yeah, the, the admin trio? And yeah, no, it's outstanding. Fantastic game. A lot of hustle either way. What about the booth, though? About the booth. The booth is fine. Okay, good. It's good. It's fine. <laughs> just fine. Just fine. Huh? Just, just fine. Okay. Yeah. We're high atop courtside here at the Hopkins Athletic Center. It's a great, s great view. Oh. Great Can't view. beat it. Can't beat it. And Jimmy Adams inbound the ball. Ben McKenzie at the top of the key sets up a play. Really been impressed with number 22 today. Rebounding, running the offense, couple big shots. Seems to be in command. Only a sophomore. So yeah. much confidence. Yep. Sure, Coach Keen psyched to Good see cut right there by Odell off the underneath. And a Blanchard oh, with a putback. Blanchard playing well right now. Coming on He's strong. He's confident. Comes in from the backside, gets the rebound, and goes up strong with it. It's not often you see someone with hands like that uh, standing at, you know, six foot six plus. Yeah. Moving his feet, hustling. Those long arms make up. Oh, keep him up. That's actually a good move right there. <laughs> That's that. With, with, with when you have the height, but you do the, the three two, when you get past that initial uh, top defender, there is some space in the middle there in the paint. Westwood exploits it right there. Yeah. Sometimes the players uh, struggle to be patient enough in there. But you're right. That that is a soft spot for sure. It moves it over to the right side. Swings it back. Ben crosses over. Oh. Good uh, defense nice. right there by Wilson. A good take. Two. Westwood jumps out, a couple quick points. It looks like Westwood's going to pick up a little bit, uh, three-quarter court here. Yep. Good break over to Adams. Just kind of put a little pressure on. Didn't really seem to have much uh, there, unless we dribbled into a trap. Swings it back, reverses, back over to Ben, up to the top. We're try to get, keep patient. That Hopkins offense should stay patient. Blanchard Blanchard. With another. Oh, oh wow. There it is. He's found a hot hand. Let's keep feeding him the rock. Found some confidence. Keep your hands up. That's it. Hopkins in defense rotating well. Get another rebound. Good box out there by Blanchard. Yep. Oh, okay. That wasn't a foul, but it came out of bounds off of uh, number five's hands. I'm going to sit Blanchard here and bring in Szyzycki off the bench. Great stretch there by Blanchard with a few, few good shots. And tough defense at the top of that 3-2 key. Ooh, come back to help. There it is. Ten point lead for the Hillers with six minutes left. Moving the ball from right, left to right. Back to the high post and swings it. Oh, oh in and out. Good rebound on the backside by Adams. Rector with strong hands. Not often you see a player try to throw a pass and it hits the bottom <laughs> of the backboard. But when you're 6'11", I guess it happens That's more frequently yep. than not. Wow. Here comes the defense for the Hillers. Being active with their feet, finding the ball, rotating well. Coach has got them queued up doing the right things. Swings it over, extends out. He got a piece of that ball. That looked like it hit the top of the backboard. No whistle there. And hit the ball. They didn't want to sit Blanchard for too long as they bring him back in with his hot hand. No, absolutely. Five you know, and that's a funny thing. In, in sports, you know, you, you catch a groove, and it may not last forever, but when it's there, just extend it ride out. It, ride keep, it. Keep yep. going, man. Especially in a tight game like this. The scoring is at a premium, certainly. 
And he's open right over there to the corner. McKenzie finds a way to beat his man, reverses it back to the center. Austin over to Fletcher yep. coming low here. <coughs> Zitsky to the top of the key. Nice. McKenzie oh. for three. Uh, nice rebound, rebound by Westwood. Yep. That's all right. That's a good <laughs> shot. Hopkins finds a way back. Rotate down. Not a lot of space under there. Nope. Let's draw the foul on McKenzie, it looks like. He's down there in the trees. But he's held his own with a number of rebounds, and he's certainly not afraid yep. as a sophomore. Oh. Well, I tell you, they've missed a few foul shots already tonight, and they, Westwood just does not seem to be shooting the ball the way they probably have most of the season. Off again. Well, let's miss the last four. Yeah. Now, as a shooter, does that get in your head? Start second-guessing yourself? I think so, yeah. I mean, it, it, some would say you just got to keep shooting to try to get out of that. Um, but they don't have a lot of opportunities right now with, with the Hiller defense. But uh, certainly, I think, in a, you know, it, it certainly gets in, in, in some head. Hold there on Hebert there on Rector. I think too, you ball. know, and, and some people will call the diamond and one a gimmicky defense, but when you get, when you come out with a game plan and all of a sudden you're playing against this, it gets in your head a little because you've been maybe practicing the last couple of days for this one thing, and now it's something different, and where you thought you were going to be, you're not, and, uh, you know, they're all amateur athletes, so it doesn't take much to get them off their game a little, and uh, that could be a result of this. You know, plus your, your home court advantage. Yeah, uh, that adds up big time. Nice ball fake by Jimmy Adams and a great take. Good backside rebound by Szyzycki. Yes. Excellent job. Good hustle. That's a third or fourth backside rebound that the Hillers have come away with uh, with a putback in the, in the quarter. You know, you said the record's two and seven, but the hustle's been there all the way through. They work really hard every game. So timeout Time by, out Westwood. by Westwood. You could tell Zach is not afraid to give the extra effort. He knows how to play away from the ball. And uh, credit to him for coming up with that big rebound right there. So the 10-point lead uh, with 4.09 left. It's going to be come down to the wire. You know, uh, obviously Westwood's elite player coming out has kind of uh, stymied their offensive game plan a little bit in the second half. Yeah, looks like more of an ankle injury as he sits on the on the sideline. But another thing to to point out now that Westwood is uh, with 17 fouls in the half, uh, so the Hills will be in the one and one. Moving forward, which is uh, which is important to note with four minutes to go with Absolutely. the 10 point lead. We see on the camera here our JV basketball team. Yeah, They've been doing pretty well uh, this season. They had a great uh, uh, heroic uh, come from behind victory against the Norton Lancers a couple weeks ago on a Friday night where some huge three pointers and an and one uh, to kind of cap off a uh, 12 point run. Really exciting to watch. So the future looks bright for the uh, Upton and Hillers uh, basketball program. Another great group. As good of students as the varsity. Absolutely. We have great students here at the high school. No question. Here's Zach. Nothing, it, it, you know, something about watching a left-handed player shoot the basketball, it just seems so pure. I don't know what it is. Really he's the greatest NBA left-handed player of all time. Ooh. Chris Mullen? <laughs> he was excellent. He was a great shooter. Yeah. Pombo, do you have a suggestion? I don't know many left-handed basketball players. Who, who would you go with? I, I, you know, Chris Mullen's a good one. Uh, it's a good one. I'm trying to think. Yeah, right? me as well. Yeah. Is Carmelo but Anthony left-handed? I mean, he's certainly not one of the best yeah, ever, but right. I feel like yeah. he plays with his left quite a bit. Over to Ben and looking to trap, but he intelligently breaks good it. Move. Good pass to Zach, to Austin, with up fake. Kicks it back out to the top. Smart move. Yeah, there's no rush. There doesn't need to be a rush right now for him. Roll the game. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Nice job. Nice dribbling out of that double team. And oh. a nice finish by McKenzie. Really nice touch there with the right hand. Just yeah. with, you know, just with a kiss right just off the glass. Good awareness. Felt the double team coming. Spun away from it. And used Odell there to get a little bit of separation. Yeah. You're right, Justin. Odell was kind of a lead blocker there. Didn't quite get called for a foul. Not a three, a two-point jump shot. Oh, yeah, jump, jump ball. ball. It's going to go to Westwood. 37, defense. 25, 316 left. Excellent defense. So yes. there's, there's no quit in these Westwood no. Wolverines. This, this full, in, a, in, a time, in a good timeout by Tom Keene. 
Ran out, they ran a full court press the last two possessions that Hillary struggled to get across. Uh, so Tommy Keene's going to call that timeout and, and draw some plays up next time, hopefully. If you have an underclassman running the point, do you have to do that in those kind of situations when you know they're going to be a lot more pressure on you, go to kind of a man press defense? I guess it, yeah, I guess it depends on the experience. I'm sure that's part of it. You know, um, I think that it's it, it's never easy to break a press. Certainly, you know, obviously that in Westwood's in a little bit of a um, little despair mode now, down by 12 with three to go. So they're going to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Um, you know, but McKenzie seems to handle the ball really well and seems to have some confidence. So. Um, you know, it's got to be a luxury to have three people to look up at that are over six foot six to look at it at half court or further to get the, get a pass down the, the court. So the key to the press break too is making sure that people know where they're supposed to be. Space. Everyone, all five yeah. guys. So if one guy falls out of space, then it, it's imp almost impossible to break. And so the board, the whiteboard, will allow the coach to reset, make sure everyone knows what their role is, who's supposed to flash when, and uh, then it becomes pretty easy to break. Mm. But the minute people get panicked or keep their head down, yep. that's when they can be kind of difficult. Now Westwood with the ball on the top, swings it over to the left. Back the wide open guy in the, the ball. And Trying to find, yep, find one another. Swing here to, to Reed, he's open. One thing that with their long arms that allows for them to recover very quickly, than, you know, very quickly. an average yeah. team would in this type of yeah. defense. Yeah. Uh, big he's a good shooter, Reed Wilson, his third three of the game. We gotta keep an eye on him as we go down the stretch here. Oh, the foul. Not a terribly smart foul. Let's hope the Hillers keep hitting their free throws. They'll be in the one-on-one -on -one here. 90 feet away from the hoop. Zach had uh, just knocked down his two previous foul shots. This is where you really earn a, wit a victory here, guys, is on the charity stripe. This is a huge advantage for the Hillers. They've knocked down most of their free throws. Nice. He gets the first of the, the one on one. Shooter's touch. He had a little bit of backspin on that ball. It sat on the rim and then rolled right in. Excellent. Extends the lead to 10 points. I missed the second. Rebound Good by Wilson. Yep. Here come the Hillers on defense. Ball swung down to the left side. Reverses it. They kind of had success with that rotation, yep. finding guys Blanche open. Blanchard got out quick, though. Good rebound there by Blanchard. Got to hold it strong. Yep. Nice See, Westbrook's trying to get the ball to Reed. We got a three on one here Still with Adams you running. Can slow it down there. You don't have to. Don't. <coughs> oh, we got a break there. The Hillers want to take advantage of the clock. There's so many possessions left. Put the ball in a decent foul shooter's hands and let Westwood put him on the line. Coach from Westwood's questioning the officials wants to know what the call was. Doesn't seem to be pleased with it. Question regarding who it tipped out on maybe, I'm not sure, yeah. but Hopkins in ball as they inbound it over the top to Ben McKenzie as he holds the ball, gets ready to call for a play to the high post, swings it over to Zach Sissisti. Zach over to Ben. Swings Good movement to Jimmy. here. Again, no rush. No, take your Good time. Good patience inside to Odell. Lost, it. Lost the ball, but we worked the clock. Nice move on the baseline, we got a foul there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Noticed a few times uh, some of the, the big men for the Hillers will put it down on the floor while they're in the paint. And, and that kind of gets some of those, those hands, uh, those smaller hands down from Westwood to kind of reach in on it. It's important to kind of keep it above uh, when you kind of rotate and, and pivot towards the basket. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, in the NBA you see some of those guys power dribble and then dunk it, but uh, it, the safest play for sure is to kind of keep it up above yep. your shoulders where they can't even touch it without fouling you. Oh. Dangerous inbound there by Westwood. A 10 point game with two minutes left. Westwood gives it back into the middle of the paint. Reverses. Hop Hopkins looks like they're back in a 2 point three here. Shot. Excellent the rebound. rebound by McKenzie. McKenzie, he sees his it's good breaking. vision. And a foul there. Wow. Number four on, on Westwood. Good job by the Hillers. They had a chance for the break and they, they took it to the rim. They had numbers. Fine decision there. No need to bring that back yeah. out yet. I think in those moments you take yeah. it to the basket at this point. Absolutely. Zach with a chance to earn a couple more points in the foul line. Ooh. 
just rimming out there, similar to the last miss. It's eerily quiet as it he uh, toes the line here for a second foul shot. We have well over 100 uh, fans in attendance. Tonight, oh, absolutely. Well, well over. Well over. I think uh, on a typical Friday night, maybe without an ice storm, we'd even have, you know, closer to five or 600. But uh, it's still a great TBL matchup here. Ten-point game with 135 left. Big shot right Big there by Anderson. Moves to seven. Kenzie's got to be careful with the ball. This looks like nice. Nice play by Zach. Good Lucky athletic depression. decision. Yep. Time out by Coach Keen. All right, guys, we got a seven point game with 121 left. Hopkinton ball. Uh, what do you tell him here? What do you think uh, Coach Teen, uh, Keen is telling the team here with, with, with 121 left up by seven? What, what is the message from, from you think he's going to give them here? Well, I think they want to try to work as much clock on this offensive possession, try to work that down, and then take a good shot. I mean, they've had some success hitting from the outside, but I think right now you just want to keep working it, good ball movement. And on the other end, I think you just got to really watch out. I mean, we talked about it all game, but Westwood's one of the best shooting teams in TVL. They haven't hit a lot of shots tonight, but it looks like they're warming up a bit. Next foul from Westwood would put the Hopkins and Hillers in the double. So, Yeah, you know. I'm guessing that they're going to try to find uh, the ball in the low post here and try to draw a foul or uh, get one of their, uh, their <laughs> redwood trees uh, a chance to put in an easy layup. Yep. Yep. Then again, if 44 is out on the wing and he's got that hot hand, a three-pointer wouldn't be uh, too bad for Hiller Nation. But I gotta believe they're gonna be disciplined and try yeah, to find patience. the ball. Patience, I think. The, yeah, it's gotta be patience. The message. I'm gonna guess West was gonna try to play some defense set. here and not foul. Jimmy with the ball, yeah. swings it over. They're being aggressive. West was trying to push the issue for yep. sure. It's our job to be disciplined and not allow it to be panicked. We're double teaming. This nice guys get look. open. Oh, we got a foul. We get a foul on the loose ball, but the 10th foul on Westwood. Excellent cut. Good pass right there. Good yeah, cut. Good great pass. pass. Great yeah. cut. Smart. And that's what happens when you know when you flash a second guy at the ball and the ball put and the ball handler can beat him. You're going to have mismatches. It's just a matter of can you find them? Can you execute? Them? Absolutely. Blanchard the hot hand. Hopefully he can hit some here. Extend the lead. Nice shot. First. Back him at the back of the net. Very confident stroke. Rector checking back in. Flincher misses the second rebound by Westwood. Here come the Wolverines down the floor. Big possession for them with a minute left. It's an eight point game. Reverses it over to the left down into the baseline. Wow. It's a good play inside right there by, by Bemis. Excellent reverse yep. layup. Knew he was up against Blanchard, so he comes underneath. With the reverse layup there, draws, draws foul. the foul. Yeah, and I'm interested to see how, you know, it looks like Bemis is kind of stepping up as well as Reed Wilson, but without Gio Vino in the game towards the end, which is typically the person that's going to take most of their shots, uh, others stepping up for Westwood. Hopkins inbounds the ball. Zach moves it up the right side. Excellent job breaking the press. Staying in control. Moving the ball to Jimmy Adams. Again, Westwood not looking to foul right away. Want to play defense. 39 seconds left. It's a five-point game, so a two-possession game. The difference about 20 seconds in the shot clock and game clock here. Hopkins and Wall. Up. Oh, wow. Foul by McKenzie. Carried Senior with captain an Fitzgibbon with an N1. I personally thought that foul occurred. Before Four. he began his shot. It's like an NBA kind of. Yeah, a little bit of an foul. extension there, yeah. if you ask me. That's a three point game with 28.6 seconds left. It's given pitch it. Three. Looks like Westwood's going to call a timeout to set up their defense here. No need for them to foul. No. Nope. Well, actually, they might be with 28 seconds left, I guess. When does it get to a point where you have to foul in that situation? So when there's no shot clock here, I'm curious how they're going to play it. I mean, there's two ways to think about it. One, you come right out and foul. But we're shooting two, so that could extend it to a two-possession game. Or you play some defense, kind of like they did just there, hope uh, for a turnover. Uh, and when it gets into a certain, maybe 15 seconds, you want to you want you want to actually uh, commit the foul. Uh, so I can see two different ways of going about doing it. So I'm curious to see how Westwood. I think with the way that they're playing defense right now, with 28 seconds left, my my, my guess is they're going to continue to play some hard-nosed defense, see if they can get a turnover uh, before committing a foul. 
Yeah, I would agree with you. I think based on the way they've played defense the last five minutes, uh, I would not foul early. I would expect to get the turnover. While we're here, I'd like to uh, just give a shout out to our producers, John Ritz and Mike Corosian. Done a great job putting together uh, tonight's performance. We have a few other uh, folks that we can recognize as well. We want to recognize directors Mike Terosian and Tom Dings. Did an excellent job. For graphics, we have Samantha Dings. And camera operators, we have Bob Hamilton, John Ritz, and Mary Arnott. Excellent. Really lucky to have a great uh, team to bring community television together. So they fall right away. Wow. I don't know if that was it. they meant to do that, but they fall right away with 27.1. I can't believe they let us do this, this crew. They actually yeah. let us in the booth. Yeah, oh yeah. And it's good luck fun. getting good luck getting us out. Yeah, we might be here all night. It's <laughs> been fun. So we get the men's 40 and overly coming in next. We could call that game. But we got uh, Ben McKenzie on the line. Uh, he's had a great night, and uh, this is a pretty big spot for it sophomore. Is. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see what type of future we have uh, with how he handles this situation. Big shot, big shot. So that ball pretty well. Big Excellent point game. Shot. Can extend it to a two possession game here with a, with a big shot here. I don't think they intentionally fouled him in the corner. I, 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 I think don't they think thought so. they had yeah. a trap. I think they did too. Excellent. Two possession Very game. 27 seconds left. Big Weston shot. brings it over the half point. Hopkins has really just got to delay this shot, if yeah. anything else. It's okay if they hit it. We just can't have it. A big three oh, right wow. there Huge by three. Reed Wilson. It's 4-3 of the game. <coughs> Makes it a one-point game with 16 seconds. What a great finish here. Yeah, a little too tight for my liking, yeah. but, you know, a great high school <coughs> matchup. Westwood certainly give them credit. They fought their way back into the game. They scored 30, at least 32 second-half points. Um, and uh, we'll see what Hopkins is able to dial up. Now, now they're down one. So with 16 seconds left, I think you're probably going to see a chance for a steal and then maybe a foul. I would agree, yeah, because um, they'll get two shots. So you're still only looking at a one possession game even right. after the foul. So I think that they're probably going to um, try to commit it early, uh, earlier in, the, in, in, the, shot, in, in the, the clock here to try to get someone on the line so they can get a, a good look with a reasonable amount of time left. This is so. where you could see one of those plays where, you know, if they're going to go full court press, you run a back pick and then throw one over the top, top. try to get a guy loose down yeah. on this side. Or uh, Indiana with Bobby Knight as a coach used to run a baseline play where they'd pot spot someone on the other side equally out of bounds and reverse it to him, then he'd throw it long. Yep. So there are a number yep. of plays here uh, Coach Keen's aware of that can help kind of loosen up this press in, in a, just a manner like this where you have a minimal amount of time uh, you know Westwood's going to be over-aggressive. We'll see what happens. One good thing is that Hopkins has been in a lot of close games this year. So the moment's not going to be too big for them. They'll have an idea of how to handle this and what they could do. Certainly be a sweet victory. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Seems like they may have extended yeah, that extend time out. Seems sure. yeah. yep. Perhaps, uh, I don't know, maybe the other team called the timeout. I mean, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what's going on right now. These refs know they like to get the heck out of the gym as soon as possible. That's kind of their MO. And, uh, most fans can't blame them, you know. <laughs> we'll see in the, uh, in the football game Saturday night with the Houston, Texas, and New England Patriots, there were a lot of New England fans who thought <coughs> the refereeing was wildly one-sided, especially early on in the game. Uh, that's, I think, just people's passion. They tend to see things through their own lens. Looks like Adams will be inbounding the ball here. Adams has got a good arm, so see if they shoot McKenzie deep. Looks like Szczynski's gone deep there. Throws it up. Uh, Rector smart. with strong hands. Gets it over to Adams. 12 seconds left. They foul. Mm -hmm. It's given with the foul on Adams. Great call getting into Rector. He can, he can touch the ball. 10 inches before anyone else on the floor can, so it gives them the greatest just chance for possession. Yeah, just got to have strong hands. You know people are going to be reaching at it. Nice pass over to Adams. Big shot there. Big shot. Great chance for Jimmy to, as a senior, really showcase all the hard work he's put in over the years. Odell, Odell. Odell coming yep. in. Back in for Blanchard. The starting five back in for the Hillers with 12 seconds to go. Excellent shot. Big shot. Huge three, uh, free throw yep. shot. They got to extend out on threes here. Westwood calls a timeout. With 8.7 to set up this potential final shot here. Good, I think they're drawing something up for Wilson here. I would think so, with the way he's been shooting the ball. Four threes already tonight. 
Now, here's a question I have for you guys. If they get Wilson the ball, is the call to hard foul him, make sure he can't get a three off, uh, knowing that if you don't, the chances of him shooting it are, and going in are pretty high. So now you limit him to only scoring two. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, we're also at the point now any foul that we commit, we'll put them at the line for a one and one um, It'd be nice if you can get Westwood to inbound the ball, take a few seconds off the clock, and then commit the foul, put them on the line so they can only get to a 43-42 score uh, with, with, with not much time left. So I wonder if Keen will foul right away. Uh, you got to make sure you foul the right person. Obviously, Reed Wilson with the, with the hot hand, you want to try to stay away from him. I'm sure they're trying to get the ball inbounds to him. But when you have some of that wiggle room here, it might not be a bad idea to foul uh, right away. Yeah, you also want to be careful when you do foul that the guy's not in shooting. Shooting, exactly. Position. You gotta, yep, that yep, really yep. backfire. Uh, we've yes, seen that, that a number of times, yeah. in the, uh, especially in college basketball. Yeah, if you're going to foul, foul hard here, boys. You see they put Jimmy on, Reed. Must That's be thinking like the same thing. Yeah. There he is. He's trying to, try to get it to him. And he gets it. Fadeaway three is off. Odell with the rebound. The Hillers win it. Big win by the Hillers. 43 to 40. Good defense right there by Adams as Reed Wilson tried to get a shot off. A little off balance. That was absolutely rebound. excellently played yep. by Jimmy. Yep. We were wrong about the foul. Or at least I was. They let him play. That's why he's the coach and we we're up in the booth. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> I'm not coaching anymore. Well, this was a lot of fun. I agree. I enjoyed and, doing uh, it with you guys. Good time. Great win for the Hillers. Gets them to three wins overall. And, you know, this is the way that this team, uh, not terribly experienced, second half of the season comes through now. And, uh, you know, you never know. You just got to keep playing. They play hard defense, and they got some of those trees getting more and more comfortable. Absolutely. I think that the, uh, the tournament is definitely within uh, a reasonable striking distance. And this will definitely give them some momentum. And if I, if I recall, I think switching sports a little bit, but the Packers were three and six. Uh, before making quite a bit of a run and having lost since. So it's doable. You know, we get some confidence here. Uh, Blanchard with the hot hand. Hopefully he can keep that going. Jimmy Adams with some great defense. McKenzie with some great point play. Uh, so kudos to the team and a good job to Coach Keen with a good game plan, uh, good defensive scheme. So hopefully they can keep it going on Friday night against the Clockers. Sounds good. I'll be here, not on the booth, but down with the uh, fans. Mr. Pavel, yep. you're going to join I me? I will be here as All well. All right, yep. excellent. So awesome. we invite the Clockers on Friday, and from uh, Evan Bishop and Justin Pavel, I'm Josh Hanna, and uh, thank you all for tuning in tonight and wishing you a uh, safe ride home or, or be safe with this weather. And uh, go Hillers. Thanks right. a lot.